So I've been working on this generic pop song track this week with some sounds I found in Splice. I don't remember what the original sounds were. I think one of them was this Rex loop, which just sounds like this, I guess. That was one of them. The other one, okay, I don't know if there were one or two others. But anyway, the main one that I used was um, sound here. I don't know if I still have it. No, not that one. Maybe if I open Splice it'll tell me. I'm still new to the Splice thing. I haven't really, haven't really messed around with it too much. This one. Never gonna give you up. I'm never gonna let you go. Never gonna say goodbye, no. <laughs> Actually, that's not the one I was thinking of. But I did use that one too. That was the third one. That one sounded like... Never gonna give you up. I'm never gonna let you go. Never gonna say goodbye, no. So like, that's a bit different. I had to change the format, pitched it down a little bit. Um, oh, I really, I want to show you the other one that I used. This one. Cool, cool. I like that. Um, I did some stuff with it and it ended up sounding, well, I, I chopped it up, reversed some things, and it ended up sounding like this. But then I added some other elements and uh, yeah, so far, so far we kind of have it sounding a little bit like this. I'll just play from halfway through the first verse. This is not mixed yet, really. Yeah, so like that's <laughs> that's the song so far with three splice loops that I found. Fun fact, you can use these uh, little little markers to jump around parts of the song if you want to kind of know what one section sounds like into the other without having to hear the bit in the middle. Does that make sense? So if I put this like right marker like kind of here or kind of here and then put the left marker here and turn loop on, when it gets to the end of this part, it's going to skip all of this bit in the middle here and jump straight to my next part so I can see how that sounds. Sounds like that. So I, I discovered something. 
I've done this before, like way back once upon a time sometime, but I forgot how to do this. So I rediscovered it the other day. Basically, I ended up with this, well, there's this patch called String Sequence. Um, oh, where'd it go? Did I delete it? My gosh. Anyway, there's this dope patch called String Sequence for the Stringwork plugin that you can find under Processed. Um, now this is cool. So this, this just kind of like runs. I don't really understand how it works super well. I was trying to figure this out. If you go into the devices, you can see that it's using a Thor. And if you look at what's happening on the Thor, you can see that when you play, the run thing is going on and it's starting on the note C. And if you look over here, you can see LFO2 is controlling the step sequence to transpose. So the sine wave here in LFO2 must be controlling the melody, essentially. And you can see that if you like change the rate on the LFO, that changes the melody, or if you change the, um, the, the shape of the waveform that the LFO is generating, that again changes the melody, but I really like the default one, um, which I forgot where everything was, so I'll just put the patch in again. I really like the default one, which sounds like this. And, bonus, uh, <laughs> that turned out to be the exact same key as the song I'm in, which is helpful, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but the problem is, I, I don't just want it to like run every time, and you'll notice there's this weird thing at some point coming up right there. Then now it's back to normal. Right there. Why? I don't understand why that note is different. Um, Anyway, that note is not one that I want. So, because I can't just draw in a MIDI clip and write something, because what happens if you draw in a MIDI clip is you get this kind of situation. Um, like say, say I draw that note there. understand what it's doing so I just kind of ignored it because it was already playing notes that I wanted so what I did is you so this is this is useful anytime you want to record something that's playing MIDI or playing something what I did is I went over to string sequence here and on the string sequence channel you go you open up the the channel here and you go record source and then what that does um, if you like jump over here into my string sequence channel that I added, it's just an audio track. When you go to the inputs here, you can record run string sequence. And now, if I hit record, this channel is recording whatever the string sequence is playing. Now, I didn't want the bit with that note, so once I recorded it as audio, I just cut the bit that didn't have that note and got rid of the other part, and was left with this. Just, just the audio vibes. And then I deleted that, because apparently I didn't need it. Um, fun times. So yeah, this is another fun beat in progress.
I'm, I'm digging where this one's gone. It's uh, it's still got some some ways to go, I think. But but but, but you know, we're getting there. We're getting there.